You're waiting for a train, a train that will take you far away. You know where you hope this train will take you, but you can't know for sure. Yet, it doesn't matter, because you'll always be together. Hi everyone, welcome to Nobodrum Radio, this is DJ Sally, and I will be your presenter for today's theme, Sleep. I'm sure many of you may be wondering why I've started my opening line with trains rather than any other thing that could actually be related to sleep. Some people might have recognised that this quote is actually from the famous Christopher Nolan's film Inception as the main character Cobb and his wife Mal decide to wake up from their dreams. Touching on the theme of sleep, Inception is basically about how dreams are highly intertwined with the real world. Therefore, through lucid dreaming and connecting into other people's dreams, Nolan suggests it could be possible to inject an idea subconsciously whilst one is in their sleep. Luckily today, I won't be incepting into your dreams. Instead, I'm hoping that this podcast will be the train that rather takes you away from reality and to your dreams. Bring you all the best. This is No But I'm Radio with DJ Sally and today's theme is sleep. People tend to have different sleep styles or habits when it comes to bedtime. Some can't help themselves from falling asleep during a movie they turned on after dinner, while others just can't stop watching YouTube till 10 in the morning. For someone, their nighttime essentials could be a warm cup of milk and a few drops of oil to help them sleep. On the other hand, someone might be chucking another can of Red Bull to keep themselves up. I've always been the one with insomnia, but these days, I can't even keep my eyes open after 1am that I don't even remember how many times I've been like half asleep at a pub. But normally though, a typical bedtime routine for me would be washing up, very effortlessly putting on some skincare products and falling asleep with my favourite YouTube video on. I know, pretty dull. So instead, I've brought some celeb stories who may have a rather interesting bedtime routine than mine. First off, we have Bill Gates. Now, this one is quite conventional, reading every night before bed. It's told his choice of books would be biographies, magazines, and books on philosophy. Now, there's a reason why he's so brilliant. Moving on, we have the one to envy, Mariah Carey. Being one of the most successful singers, it is definitely top priority for her to take care of her voice. Therefore, she's mentioned in an interview that she sleeps up to 15 hours a night and has about 20 humidifiers around her bed. Mariah be living the dream. Okay, let's get a bit more quirkier. Uh, Ever had that moment when it's Sunday morning and you're having the best sleep in? And out of nowhere, you wake up irritated with the roaring sound of the vacuum cleaner drilling through your ear. Apparently, Wayne Rooney loves that sound. He's written in his autobiography of how he can't fall asleep unless he has the sound of a vacuum cleaner or a hairdryer in the background. However different people fall asleep, there's still a pretty solid opinion about how people feel about sleeping. People love sleeping. I mean, love is almost an understatement, they're obsessed about it. But if you come to think of it, sleep is very much like love. The more you sleep, the more you never want to wake up. The more you love, the more you want to love. As much as love enriches our life, so does sleep. Like having a healthy relationship, a good sleep cycle, will help with your mental health. Last but not least, both love and sleep comes when you don't look for it. You'd spend the night fully awake, begging for at least a four hour slumber but have none. But that same afternoon, as you sit back on your chair with a cup of tea, you feel your eyelid grow heavier and heavier. Sleep has come. 
Love and sleep. They come to you at random, sometimes when you don't even expect it to. But there's nothing else to do but fall into it. After all, what else could you do? Hello everyone. I'm Moon and Stars from London. I thought I would share some of my crazy dreams I had as a very imaginative child. When I was younger, at around late primary school to early secondary school, I was really into K-pop. I wanted to become a K-pop star and shine like the people I saw on TV. I was especially into JYP entertainment and loved 2PM and the Wonder Girls. I frequently had dreams and fantasies about them coming to London and how they would somehow end up in New Modern, which is the greater London career town. And as destiny would have it, they would end up in front of our house. I loved the Kun, but I didn't dream about him liking me or anything of that sort but rather how 2pm would miraculously end up staying at our house and how they would be blown away by my mum's cooking and remember us when they returned to Korea. They would love me as they were their younger sister and they would mention our family in interviews and talk about how they received genuine love and healing through us. Maybe as a young child I could see their burden as a K-pop artist and even through my adolescent eyes subconsciously want to provide them with some healing. I also had a dream that JYP set up a new office in London and it was located opposite New Molden Station in The Cuts. Those New Moldeners will know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, my dreams are not so strange anymore, but I still wonder what dreams mean. Do you think dreams can really show us snippets into the future? Does it really peek into our honest heart? Or is it just a mess of jumbles? Asian cultures still believe in Tamils where dreams represent a certain aspect of real life. But European and Western cultures don't have these beliefs. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Moon and Stars. I loved how I could relate to it. I've honestly also tried to make myself into having dreams about my favourite idol when I was young as well. But he'd never show up. I'm guessing he was too busy though. <laughs> Back to your question on dreams. Hmm, I'm not sure. I feel like it's upon how you want to take it, which is why people tend to tell you that dreams work the opposite way when you have a nightmare, or that they're sort of a prophecy when you have good ones. Honestly though, I do tend to get superstitious hearing stories from people around me. For example, my friend's mum was taking a nap in her room when she heard a young girl's voice in her dreams. Running around the kitchen was a blonde girl wearing a Victorian dress, constantly shouting, wake up. When she did, she went straight down to the kitchen to find a boiling pot. I've also had a friend who had a dream of being surrounded by a pack of huge cattles and their hmm, manure, <laughs> which is supposed to mean good luck in terms of finances. The next day, he bought a lottery ticket and no jokes, one second place. But in my case, I try to just take the good ones back to reality. If my dream of the night is a bit more with action, I pump myself to having a more enthusiastic morning. When my dreams feature weird animals, I always google their readings up, searching for the best and believing that I'd have a great day. I mean, after all, it's not the dream but you who make dreams come true. We often bump into bad days, and often too many. Sometimes life can be too much to handle. The days might push you too hard, and the nights might be too cold to face alone. If you've had a bad day, it's okay to escape reality for once in a while. Simply throw yourself on the bed and forget whatever that's been bothering you. A huge thank you to everyone staying with us till the end, and we'll be ending sleep with a piece from Liet, called Cinematic. Hoping you have a good night's sleep and the sweetest dreams, this has been your sleep host, Sally, with Mobidem Radio.